Yeah, so, so close up and then wide. Right here, yeah, yeah that, that as works. As we transition. As we transition, that works. Okay.
the music. Appreciate that. I'd like to welcome you to our Gordon B. Hinckley Awards for our winter semester 2024. I'd like to special welcome to the students, uh, the recipients, to family, friends, and to our faculty that are here with us today. So welcome to our, our ceremony. We appreciate you being here today. Um, I'm Brother Reader. I'll be conducting today. And to kind of dive right into our program, um, we've asked uh, Brother Mollum, Christian Mollum, to come up and if you'll give us an opening prayer, get us started. Father in heaven, with thanks we come before thee with gratitude for um, President Gordon B. Hinckley for the life that he lived and for the opportunity to be able to, to learn from him. We're thankful for the Gordon B. Hinckley uh, Award recipients in our communication department, grateful for the example that they've been of, of outstanding students and of the, the way in which they've facilitated the success of the, the other students around them and helped to, to bring light to, to the department. We thank thee and pray for thy spirit to, to be with them as they as they work towards graduation. And these things we say with thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Just to kind of get us started, I wanted to share just a little bit of information about this award, just to kind of set the tone for the meeting for today. Uh, the Gordon B. Hinckley Communicator Award is in memory of the beloved church leader who used his gifts and talents as a skilled and honorable communicator to build the kingdom of God. President Hinckley was a masterful writer and editor and a dynamic speaker. He understood the nuances and principles of organizational behavior, conflict resolution, and persuasion. President Hinckley appreciated the value of well-planned well events and is credited with being a pioneer in the, in the use of visitor centers and media in the church. Shortly after returning from a full-time mission to England, he was charged with spearheading the church's radio, publicity, and mission literature committee. Named, he was named in 2004 the Communicator of the Year by the National Forensic League, and President Hinckley was a thoughtful, compassionate listener who reached out to people from all walks of life. Building bridges of understanding between those of diverse beliefs and interests was a hallmark of his life and ministry. His administration was characterized by its openness to the media, and he did much to help bring the church out of obscurity. We'll watch a little video about that. President Gordon B. Hinckley's early assignments in public relations gave him much experience with the media. His later appearances on television and radio gave the church unprecedented opportunities to share the message of the world. President Hinckley respected the media, but he was not afraid. With his understanding of church history and facts, he was not derailed by questions that had not been previously pondered. He was quick mentally, and he spoke the truth without pretense. Why is the church growing so quickly? What, what purpose does it serve? Well, it's growing because it has a commission. To go in the world and teach the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. We consider that a divine commission, and we're pursuing it very aggressively. And at the same time, while in that process, we think we're doing good. We think we're improving people's lives. We think that we're causing them to stand taller and straighter and be better people. In February of 2002, Salt Lake City hosted the Winter Olympics. Under President Hinckley's direction, thousands of volunteers represented the hospitality of Utah and the church. In this time, and in numerous other moments of leadership, he met with world, national, and religious leaders. President Hinckley had a capacity to connect with people from all beliefs and nationalities and was eminently prepared to tell the story of the church to the world. So this award in his name is given to students who have displayed similar attributes, specifically those who received this award are being honored for their character, talents, diligence, and pursuit of excellence. Selected students are nominated by faculty in the communication department uh, who feel they will represent the church, the university, and department as exemplary graduates. On a personal note, one of the things I love most about President Hinckley is President Hinckley was my prophet of my youth, if, you, if, I, if, if I could share that. And I grew to love him. And um, one of the things that I appreciated most about President Hinckley is the love that he had for people. I'm gonna share a little video about that. Gordon B. Hinckley's ministry was marked by his genuine love for the people of the world. In his years of service, he traveled the globe, coming face to face with those of all nationalities, and he extended his hand to bless and strengthen them. With the needs of the less fortunate in mind, President Hinckley established the Perpetual Education Fund, offering financial and educational help to those with limited opportunities. Yet despite the demands of duties, President Hinckley still reached out to the one. While in England preparing for the groundbreaking of the Preston Temple, President Hinckley was informed that in the audience was an old friend. When he learned that one of his dear friends of years ago, when he was a young man as a missionary, was in the audience. He came off of the stand 
and worked his way through the audience with, with emotion, seeking to find Robert Pickles. When he found him sitting in a wheelchair, he took hold of his hand, they embraced one another, tears streamed down both of their cheeks, and it was a great reunion. That is so typical of President Gordon B. Hinckley, his great love for the saints. So in addition to his love just generally for people, President Hinckley loved the youth, um, especially. And he actually came to campus, and some of you may have seen this video, but he came to campus um, a while back to help with the dedication of a building, and he shared his love that he has for the students here at BYU. I don't know, share a clip of that video with you as well. We will follow the master. First, I want to tell you that I love you. I love you, kids. You. <coughs> Wonderful young people of this church i love you there's no no end in sight for the good you could do you know what you're just simple kids you're not geniuses i know that but the work of the world isn't done by geniuses it's done by ordinary people who've learned to work in an extraordinary way People of your kind who can do these things. So just in closing, um, I guess my invitation to you recipients of this award today, I would just uh, invite you and I guess just share with you that it's my prayer that uh, just like President Hinckley, but more importantly, like our Savior Jesus Christ, that you will strive to consistently be an effective communicator and that you will uh, lead with love. And I share that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to go ahead and move into the presentation of the awards to our different recipients today and, uh, and by our different faculty members, as you can see in the program listed. One of the things is as you get your award and as that is presented to you, if you will step over to the side here, and we'll have your photo taken, just give you a little heads up of that. And then um, they might want to do a group picture at the very end as well. So just help us out with that. Does that sound fair? The other thing is going to be, just so I don't forget, for these awards, they have a box. And I think they're probably under the table. Delena, yeah, does that sound right? OK. So make sure you grab the box underneath the table and you pack it up so it doesn't break. Brother Skinner, our previous department chair, would always remind us that they don't bounce. OK? <laughs> so. If you'll remember that. And then uh, with that being said, um, see Brother Hewitt, you here? All right, got you. So let me say some nice things about you and then I'll actually present this. So Katya has uh, been a student in one of my classes every single semester that I have taught at BYU-Idaho all two of them <laughs> um, and uh, one of the, the main reasons why I nominated and think Katya is so deserving um, as a recipient of this award is if I could sum up her her communication and her writing and her work in my classes in one word it would be thoughtful uh, the sources she uses the message she's sending she is very thoughtful about what she is saying and what impact is it going to have um, all skills uh, that we see and, and have watched um, from President Hinckley uh, and so I'm excited to see what you do with that. Um, you've accepted a job at Incline Marketing, moving forward, onward, and upward. So big congratulations.
we'll see. This is always hit and miss for me, so we'll find out if the plan can be carried out. Just so you know, I felt like a stalker taking that picture at the senior showcase. Um, so it's a privilege to introduce Amelia. Um, I think as faculty members, we're always very appreciative of students who are standard setters and change makers. And Amelia is definitely that. Uh, it's been a joy to have her in classes and to observe the influence that she has on the entire um, rest of the class. So I was thinking when we when we select this, we always choose someone we would hire. Like who would you hire is kind of the question as to who we would vote for. And so I pulled this up out of Forbes magazine. It's a 2024 list of really big assets to put on a resume if you are entering the workforce. So beginning professionals, what's an asset to put on the resume? And I thought, well, this is cool. How timely, These, she has all of them. Every single one of these um, in spades. So I think I have been impressed with her level of professionalism throughout the semester. It's so great to have someone meet standards because she chooses to, rather than because you have to continually express those. Um, she took up a project that I wanted to show uh, really quickly, but first let me just hit all of these things. She's she's really skillful um, and you're gonna see, you see the, I love this picture because of the picture behind her um, too. So you see her in her professional mode, but I think she carries the spirit of the gospel into every single thing she does, but she knows how to adjust the language. So it's not like she's talking to you like a missionary. Um, she's instead embodying the principles that would reveal her commitment to the gospel. And she knows how to do that in a way that's incredible. So she's communicating on a very high level. Her teamwork is great. She, she steps in to help people meet the bar um, when they need, but she doesn't blur the boundary of who's responsible for what. And she lets people be accountable too. And she has a really good way of balancing that. Um, she's definitely a leader and she can solve problems. And I, I do wanna just kind of mention really quickly her senior project in a moment, but um, she is actually interested in the community and in her work with Chamber of Commerce. She's very involved with different community entities and she likes to, um, I think I can say with confidence, identify problems and understand them before she just wants to impose her opinion. On them. So she takes the time to really understand and to see it from diverse perspectives. And then with that, uh, she approaches in very constructive ways, different avenues of action that might um, kind of mitigate the pain points around the problem. And it's really cool to watch that happen. And then the self-motivation is just very unique um, in her case. So I just, I pulled just a few pages from her senior project. I was really impressed with it. But what, you know, you're looking at a document, but what that shows me is She's very capable of understanding how someone's not gonna open a document unless they find it engaging to look at. So that's good. Um, you can't see the language in it, but she knows how to tell a story and to tell it in a way that makes it meaningful to an issue. So it's not aside from the concentration on the issue, but rather it's illustrating the issue. She knows how to then design. She designed the survey um, and got 200 something responses from students. Um, she was able to speak with people in administrative roles given that data and be taken very seriously. Instead of saying, I'm a student, could you please make time to talk to me? She made their time valuable to them by giving them data that she had designed and gathered herself and drawn insights from, which is a much higher level um, skill than you know, a lot of people are even expected to have in some of their classes here, but she ran with that beautifully. She also knows how to capture the data in a way that makes it readable and accessible and engaging and meaningful. So she was able to take an issue and create dimension um, because she understood how to listen to people, how to gather the data to show that this one person that I've interviewed is typical of many people and then talking to experts to gather insights about how to take the next step actions. And I think I'm, I'm really excited because I believe that this is actually going to be taken seriously by people. She has some administrators interested. I, I spoke to one person that said, please connect her with me. I want to hear what she has. 
And when you see that, you see someone that's already behaving as a professional. She's adopted professional standards. She's dedicated to acquiring the skills and using them and it's happening, which is really, really beautiful uh, for some of us to get to watch. So it's a privilege to introduce her. Um, she's among great people in the room and I am so, so lucky to be around these great students and to grow from them and learn from them and benefit from them. I think the roles are reversed a lot of the time as to who's teaching whom. So anyway, Amelia, awesome job. Great to be here. Lucky, lucky for me. And somewhere there's a box. We'll get it after. We'll get it after. Okay. Yeah. They don't have to mark everything. You're correct. But it is a cool thing, all right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't want to show up for So I met John McSwain. I don't know, it's been a couple of years, right, John? He came to my radio practicum class and he was so excited to learn more about radio. And by the end of the class, he was asking me for a job. And I didn't hesitate. I hired him pretty quick. And he's just been gold ever since. I mean, you look at these pictures, and he just, he just fits at a radio station. He's done everything there. He interviewed the Meredith, you see in that picture when they first came to campus. He got to talk with them. And if you ever see John near the Meredith, they're probably hugging. Like they're best friends now. He saw the Meredith conference this weekend. And once again, just a big bear hug, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but they became good friends. And that's what happens when you meet John McSwain is you become a good friend with him. I've walked around the department and I hear students talk about John. And they say, oh yeah, everybody knows John McSwain because he's just that type of guy where you see him, you wanna to get to know him. And the work that he has done at the radio station has been top notch. He's done a lot of video stuff. He was president of the uh, Video Society here on campus. And he's just done so many wonderful things. And he's made a great relationship with the music department. He walks in there and he's done interviews with so many of uh, the professors there and so many students when they do their different concerts that he walks in there and they all know him too. Oh, there's John, who are you talking to today? <laughs> and it, it's just amazing. And I know that he's going to have a wonderful career in communication, whatever he decides to do. And I'm just excited to see that. So let me introduce John McSwain to you as a Gordon B. Hinckley Award recipient. All right, it's my uh, privilege to introduce to you Aubriana Stafford. And uh, when the question's asked, would you hire her? The answer's obviously yes, we did. She's uh, been 
as, as a student secretary in our office for over a year. She's also had an opportunity to work with the Career Center. And so some of the feedback and some of the qualities that were listed about her were this, that she's a self-starter. She is prompt. She's motivated. She's hardworking. She's easy to work with. She follows directions. She smiles all the time and has a positive attitude. She's just a super nice person. And I think that that's a, a perfect way to describe her. Sister Scholes, who's worked directly with her, said that these are not just qualities of a communication a graduate, but these are the, the qualities of a disciple of Jesus Christ. And Sister Scholes has been trying to find a way to get her to stay with us, but Ariana has decided to graduate. And so she's going to go get another job, a better job, and continue her life. Um, she, uh, she said that she's also been... A, instrumental in helping a lot of students because a lot of students come in and if we're not there and if Delaney's is not there students still have questions and Aubriana has been able to help answer and direct those students along their path and I think that's a great quality and so she uh, uh, we and Delaney especially we all uh, wish her the best of luck and her with success as she goes to Washington DC now this is a little bit where I come into play here so I only uh, helped Aubriana, she never had a class for me. I only had an opportunity to work with her as a mentor in her senior project. And I've just got to give you just a little bit of history. And that is 25 years ago when I came here, it was Rick's College. And I had to find a way to supplement my income so I could support a family. So I started putting in sprinkling systems. And I've been doing that for 25 years on the side. And I hate leaks. Yeah, that's just, you don't want any leaky. You don't want leaks when you're putting in a sprinkling system. And I have to admit that sometimes students, myself included, when I was there, like water, try and find the path of least resistance. But I had a very interesting experience with Aubriana when she came to me. And I've, I've been known to be a little bit of a tough prof professor. I've been reminded of that recently, that that's who I am. Okay. And Aubriana came to me and said, hey, uh, I want you to be my mentor because I want someone who's going to really helped me and challenged me. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, what, what? You're not, you're not going to try and find the path. Lead. And so I did. And she did a great presentation. She worked for the Career Center and she was trying to establish housing for married students. So the university has purchased a property for our single students, but they don't have, they didn't purchase property for married students. And so she'd been working on this project. And the thing I loved about it, is she'd come to me and say, hey, I found these properties and I would say, like, well, what, what kind of properties are they? And then next time she, she'd tell me, she's like, well, this is long-term rentals. These are short-term rentals. These are Airbnbs. These are all these different types. And I was like, okay, great. So, like, what, what, what's around it? And she said, well, I discovered here are the grocery stores. Here are the restaurants. These are the metro connections that people can make. And I'm like, that's really cool. And then she'd say, here's where the churches are. These are the distances to these places. Let's even throw in some recreation. And so she showed me this map and I said, that's really, really cool. You know, it would be really cool is if you clicked on that map and you like clicked on that little button that you put and it showed all that one spot. So she went and did it. It wasn't just a map with pins. It was links to all those different activities and to give married students uh, an advantage when they try and go out there before they ever have to go out there and discover. And I just thought that that was so to me, everything that I suggested I wasn't trying to be mean. I, that's, by the way, that's not my personality is to really to help students. That's my motivation. And I thought this would make a better project and everything that I suggested, she just did. And I thought that's the kind of person you want to employ. A person who just doesn't see what's the minimum I can do, but what's the best I can do. And that's the best way to describe Aubriana Stafford and why she's a qualified candidate for the Gordon Lee Hinckley Scholar Award. You'll join me in giving all of them another round of applause. <laughs> awesome, congratulations. All right, I just wanna announce the remainder of our program um, today. So we will have um, a closing message from David Barris. He's our Associate Dean of Online in the College of Business and Communication. 
Uh, after Brother Barris, we'll have a closing prayer, which will be offered by Brother Kerr, um, one of our communication faculty. And just a little reminder in the very back in the corner, there is some food. So don't forget to come and get some food. All right. And uh, with that being said, turn the time over to Brother Barris. Grateful for the opportunity to be here. And I just want to say on behalf of the College of Business and Communication, congratulations. It's a great honor to be honored by the faculty at this university, um, dedicated individuals who have spent their time and resources to, to be here, who are professionals and who are great and, and see goodness and greatness. So congratulations to those, uh, Katia, Amelia, John, and Aviana for your efforts and the awards that you were given. I woke up this morning, I'm just going to share a quick message. I woke up this morning thinking about fruit, of all things. I woke up and it was 5 a.m. in the morning and a fruit was on my mind. And the phrase uh, that came to my mind was fruit, meat for repentance. And I don't know if it was said at General Conference this weekend. Um, in Alma 13, it says, And now, my brethren, I would that ye should humble yourselves before God and bring forth fruit, meat for repentance, that ye may also enter into that rest. So that was one of the, the, the thoughts that came to mind. The other thought about fruit that I thought about is Jacob 5 that we're reading in Come Follow Me this week about the tame fruit and the wild fruit. And also uh, a scripture in Galatians that says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Uh, as I thought about fruit, I thought about growing up. I grew up on a farm, and we farmed. We did barley. Uh, we grew barley and alfalfa, and we had cattle. And we harvested that fruit, and we sold it to make money and make a living. I can't say I particularly enjoyed it, but we did it. Um, and that was our efforts. That was our time was to produce that fruit to make a living. For you that are going out into the world, your efforts and your jobs and the fruit of your labors will hopefully be influenced by what has happened here at BYU-Idaho. And my greatest hope and our, the colleges and the university's greatest hope is that being disciples of Jesus Christ and sharing the fruit of the gospel with others will be at the forefront of your mind. That you will be examples in word, in deed, in action, and in example. And may the Lord bless you as you go out and be uh, alumni of this university and share the fruit of BYU-Idaho, what you learned here, what you gained here, and of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know the Lord will bless you. Congratulations in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful that we could gather here today and um, honor these uh, these graduates. We ask that please bless them and their, their upcoming uh, choices that they make, that they'll have the spirit to be with them and watch and care for them as they go on and, and move into the next phase of their lives. We're also thankful for this food and ask you to bless it as well. And we're grateful for these things and say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.